Hey scientists, it's Mr. Crouch again with another over the top science lesson. Today we're gonna to work on physical properties of matter. If you'd like to participate in today's lesson, you will need an apple, any color would be fine. A ruler, you're gonna want a ruler with centimeters on it and you'll know it because you'll see either CM or MM at the beginning of the ruler and it goes up to 30. Um, most tape measures have both inches and centimeters on it as well. A tissue box, any size tissue box would be fine. If you don't have a tissue box, uh, you can use any rectangular prism. Okay, so go ahead and take out your science journal and make a new title. We're gonna title it Physical Properties of Matter. Again, I um, capitalized all the important words, I underlined it, and I wrote the definition of matter. I'm sure you know from the last lesson that matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So go ahead and write that definition. Physical properties are any property of a substance that can be observed or measured without changing the substance. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to underline some important words. Uh, the first word I wanna underline is observed. And then I wanna underline measured. Now we're gonna address these individually. So first let's talk about observed. And I'm gonna go ahead and take out my apple and I'm going to write observable properties of an apple. I'm gonna underline it. And then I'm gonna start a bulleted list. Why don't you take a moment and catch up on your notes? Okay, so let's discuss some observations about our apple and then we'll get back to our notes in just a moment. So let's observe the apple and to observe it, let's start with our eyes. What do you notice about the apple? Yes, I agree. The first thing I notice is the color. So color is a physical property. So the color of the apple is red. Now, what else do you notice about the apple? Well, I'd like to look at the size. Now, as far as apples go, this is actually a pretty big apple. So I'm gonna put size is large. You could also call it medium. And if you have a different apple, uh, you can do the size of your apple. Next would be, I'd like to observe with my, <coughs> with my hands. So I'm gonna feel it. So go ahead and feel your apple. And my apple's pretty smooth. So I'm gonna put smooth. If yours is not smooth, not all apples are smooth, you put the texture of your apple. Now I'm gonna use, go ahead and use my sense of smell. Uh, mine doesn't smell much. So I'm gonna put odorless. If yours smells like something, you can put what you would like. All right, now I wanna look at the state of matter. That's also a physical property. So is this a solid, a liquid, or a gas? Well, it's a solid. So another physical property I can observe is this is a solid. And oddly, is it magnetic is a physical property. So it, is this ma apple magnetic? No, it is not. So you would put not magnetic. And the last one is taste. If you decide you wanna taste your apple, if your teacher's allowing you to taste your apple, go ahead and taste it and put your observations of the apple. Okay, so uh, the physical properties of the apple, I put color, because color is a physical property and my apple is red. If yours is red, put red. Uh, size, mine is large. State of matter, it's a solid. It's not a liquid or a gas. Uh, when I felt it, it feels very smooth. So I put smooth. Uh, this, my apple doesn't smell like anything, so I put odorless. If you smell something, go ahead and write a description of what you smell. Uh, taste is sweet. And magnetic, no, it's not magnetic. So those are the observable physical properties of the apple. In a moment, we're going to get uh, into the measurable physical properties. So go ahead and take a moment and catch up to you on your notes and go ahead and pause the video. Okay, now that we've finished the observable physical properties of the apple, it's time to do some measuring. So skip a line and write measurable physical properties of tissue box. So now we're gonna use a tissue box and since it's measurable physical properties, it means we're gonna be using a science tool. And the science tool we're gonna to start with is a ruler. So go ahead and write this in your journal, underline it, and I'll go ahead and go ahead and pause the video if you need to. 
Okay, we're going to be using a ruler to measure this tissue box. So let's think of some dimensions we can measure on the tissue box. Well, we can measure the length, we can measure the width, and we can measure the height. So we're going to measure length, width, and height. It's important to know that when you're measuring, that first of all, that you use the correct side of the ruler. In science, we always use the metric system, and centimeters are a metric unit. So you'll find the centimeters part of the ruler uh, on the opposite side of the inches, and you'll know it's centimeters because you'll see a cm or an mm. Now, when you're getting ready to measure an object, the first thing you want to do is line it up correctly. You do not line it up on the edge of the ruler here. You line it up on the first line. When you line this first line, that'll give you an accurate measurement. So let's get started on measuring the, the length of the tissue box. All right, so observe that we lined up the, uh, the tissue box on the first line and not on the edge of the ruler. Now we are on the centimeter side of the ruler, which is the metric side of the ruler. Each of these whole numbers represents one centimeter. So right up to here is one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters, four centimeters, five centimeters, and so on. What I'd like you to do now is I want you to count how many little lines, which are called millimeters, how many millimeters are between zero and one. Please pause the video if necessary. Okay, so there are 10 lines between each whole number. So between zero and one is 10 lines. Between one and two is 10 lines. Between two and three is 10 lines and so on and so on. So each line after the whole number represents one tenth of a centimeter. So here's one centimeter. Here's one and one tenth centimeters. Here's one and two tenths. One and three tenths. One and four tenths. One and five tenths. One and six tenths. One and seven tenths. One and eight tenths. One and nine tenths. Then two whole centimeters. So now let's go to the end here. So we see that the tissue box is longer than 22 centimeters, but not quite 23 centimeters. So let's look. It's 22, 22 and 1 tenth centimeters, 22 and 2 tenths centimeters, 22 and 3 tenths. It looks like it's 22 and 4 tenths centimeters, which is written like this. Okay, it's 22 and 4 tenths centimeters, which is written like this in decimal form. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and measure the, the width and the height. Okay, so now we're measuring the width of the tissue box. So it looks to me like we lined it up correctly. It's lined up here on the zero. It's going, it's just past the 12. It looks like it's one line past the 12. So go ahead and write down the width of the tissue box in the correct format. So when we measured the width, it was one line past the 12. So it'll be 12.1 centimeters or 12 and 1 tenth centimeters. And it's written like this. Now let's go ahead and measure the height. All right, so now we're measuring the height. Again, we lined it up on the zero. And I see that the height is more than five centimeters, but less than six centimeters. So how many centimeters do you think it is? Write your answer in decimal form. Pause the video if necessary. Okay, so we see it's more than five and less than six. Here's 5.5 .5 centimeters is lying in the middle. So it looks like 5.6 centimeters, 5.7 centimeters. Did you say 5.7 centimeters? If you did, that's great. All right, so let's go ahead and update the height in our science journals. Uh, we said it was 5 and 7 tenths centimeters, so that's 5.77 is in the tenths location, centimeters. Okay, great job, everyone. All right, so length, width, and height are three of the physical properties that we measured today. But there's a lot more that you can measure as well. You can multiply length, width, and height, and you would get volume. Uh, you can measure density. You can measure the temperature. You can put on a triple beam balance and measure the mass. So these are uh, some of the measurable physical properties that you can do. If you can put a number on it, then it's a measurable physical property. Well, that's all for now, scientists. Please be sure to email any questions or concerns to overthetopscience at gmail.com. Take care.